didn't get tickets with your parents to a Sabrina Carpenter show, did you? I really hope not. I really hope your parents don't get you tickets to a Sabrina Carpenter show and just be like, yeah, no, like I'm gonna come too. Nobody's parents can be present at this concert. People thought, people thought the Olivia Rodrigo show was triggering parents. Hello, 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 and welcome or welcome back. I am excited to be back talking more about Sabrina Carpenter and short and sweet. I reacted to the album in my last video. No context, no nothing, just having heard please, 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 knowing who she was dating, having heard espresso, loved both of them, um, had been, you know, keeping up with the Arrows tour going on, knew like the driver's license lore, and that was it. Was not super anti Sabrina, was just kind of like, meh on emails I can't send. But I listened to Short and Sweet and I absolutely loved it, but I've been listening to it for about the past full week, kind of almost nonstop. And so I wanted to go back now that I have much more of a context, but also much more of like a clear understanding of the lyrics and the story of each song um, and just go through and talk about my settled in thoughts on how we are feeling and what we are thinking about the album after letting it marinate and listening to it and listening to things about it for the last week or so. We're gonna go through all of our songs and our updated and solidified thoughts on them. We are going to give our final ranking of the songs and wrap it up. So yeah, let's get into things that have cropped up in the last week or so listening to and enjoying Short and Sweet. Sabrina has talked about the reason it's called Short and Sweet not being because she is short and sweet, but because she was thinking back on this last like chapter in time in her life and the things that she had processed through these songs and the things she went through etc and she felt like so many of the things that she was experiencing were due to time periods and relationships that were short and sweet but they had a much bigger effect and echo um, throughout her emotions and her life and herself. And so this is kind of like a conglomeration of things that may have been short and sweet, but they produced all of these remnants. I really love that, but I also like that it has so many meanings. Like it's not just a double entendre, but it's also kind of like cute and ironic. She does a lot of saying very biting things with a very big smile on her face and no apology in sight in this album. And so short and sweet has just the perfect kind of tongue-in-cheek touch to it that really completes the humor of this album so perfectly. I also really like that she has spoken about learning with you know the success of nonsense and her almost taking that song off of emails I can't send. She learned that she really wanted to follow her instincts and the things that resonated with her and sat right with her because she knew those were the ones that were probably going to find the most success with her fans. And so that was the kind of work that she wanted to continue to push forward and continue to put out. She decided to put out Espresso first and Please 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 second. It's been said that that was kind of like her thought that that was the order they should have put those singles out in even though there was debate about them. Um, and so she has really wanted to double down on tailoring things to what she wants them to be. Not only that, she has talked about this whole songwriting thing that I feel like we've been dealing with with Taylor Swift um, finally recently. And I feel like it's been a conversation with for years, but we're finally like getting to a point where we're able to accept that songs are written about emotions that someone can have in Taylor's words for five seconds, five minutes, five days, etc it doesn't mean that that's how you feel 100% of the time or that's like the whole of you as a person. Sometimes it's just the little voice in the back of your mind that's making this really horrible but kind of funny in a dark way joke. Sometimes that's who the song is voiced by, you know? And sometimes that's who the best songs are voiced by because we all have that little voice in the back of our heads, whether or not we talk about it or give a loud voice to it um, in our lives or not. And so she kind of speaks to that a little bit in an Apple Music interview she did. And I feel like that is something that you really have to hold in order to enjoy this album. If you listen to it with an ear of intention, you can tell that 
the entirety of this album is written from a place of knowing exactly what it is saying and how it is saying it and doing both of those things on purpose with A, a good sense of humor and B, a really blunt honesty that comes across as giving light to the things that we might even be afraid to admit to our friends because it reflects poorly upon us as a healed or mature person. You know, sometimes you want to punch someone in the face and it's okay to want to punch someone in the face. I personally, as a friend, like supporting others in the idea that it is okay to feel pretty much anything. And it's okay, you know, to want to act on pretty much anything. What you do act on is where things become a problem. It's okay to want someone to feel super, super jealous. It's okay to want someone to miss you. Everyone has an internal sense of self-interest. Everyone gets angry. Everyone gets hurt and wants to lash out. That is so incredibly relatable. And those are huge feelings that I feel like sometimes we're not always necessarily given permission permission to have an outlet for. And I remember that those were the songs that I loved so much in the early 2000s were the ones that were just so unapologetically uh, female with an attitude or with a problem that she had something to say about or just pure like hurt and anger and rage over something. The ones that really just like got really cringy and really cheesy about throwing that attitude out for the girls were the ones that I was like spinning around in my chair too and like yelling in my room because those are the feelings that like you can't act on but you do you ruminate in them a little bit um and it feels good to be able to commune in them just a little bit and laugh about it with others through this art and these songs. This album is so poised to do well right now for a lot of reasons it but I feel like the main one like the best title card is that it's a really good blend of pushing something new out in front and like kind of edging towards something that's not necessarily what's going on but also building upon what is going on and giving just a slightly tweaked version of that and like I always I don't remember where I heard it but I so incredibly like believe in and stand by it. People don't want something entirely new and entirely 100% different. They want something that they already know that's about 30% different. That's what people get excited about. That's what people like. And I think that this is that in such a wonderful, wonderful way. And like, that's not an insult. That's not a bad thing at all. That is perfect. Um, that's what I like. You know, I'm such a picky person and I'm like the first person to be like, oh, I've heard this before. I've seen this before, etc. And I'm only like 26 years old. Like I kind of almost have no business saying that, but like I feel like that a lot. The things I don't say that about are the things that have a little extra, a little spice, if you will, a little something more added to them um, that is new or different or personal or specific and Sabrina really nailed that. She really picked a lane, she really picked a character, um, and by character I don't mean something that's forced. What she has presented as her feels like a very like, you know, amped up, turned up version of who she actually is. She's a Taurus and like she's presenting as a Taurus. And we have such a specific taste for like a particular kind of celebrity authenticity right now. Like we want celebrities and we want things to talk about and people to gossip about and content to kind of go through and make our own content and have thoughts about and enjoy. But we only want to see and relate to the parts that don't highlight massive financial inequality. We want to relate to them on the levels that we can. Relationships, friendships, family, humor, sexuality, the human things that we all deal with. We want to feel like we are connected to celebrities in those ways and we don't necessarily want to hear too much about the other stuff um, or if we do we want to hear like just enough to make us envious um, but not enough to make us like feel like mm, 
that's a lot for one person. And Sabrina really like hits the nail on the head with the like cute and funny and relatably personal because she does open up. She does talk about things that she knows that people will get, you know, she does Easter egg a little bit. She does put references to who she is talking about in these songs and isn't particularly shy about it in a very early Taylor Swift way and we are also funnily enough poised right now to be very receptive to that and I think people have caught on to that which is why there are so many singer songwriter girlies out there but that type of like sitting in your bedroom with your guitar and like a sheet of lyrics like market is so incredibly oversaturated and so she took that type of emotion and she put it into these songs that have real bop to them but not only that because I would argue she kind of did that in emails I can't send but there's more humor and um, personality infused into these songs. I feel like each song really has a definite personality to it but it also has a kind of soul in common. It feels like they're all part of the same family because I feel like the personality that is at the heart of all of them is Sabrina. Sabrina really comes through in these songs and I find that interesting because a lot of these songs have a lot of different writers. Like there are like four or five on some of them but Sabrina is on all of them and I feel like that really really comes across and even though there are so many kind of very different types of songs, I feel like they do come across as a cohesive body of work because the cohesion really is like the flavor and personality that Sabrina has put into all of them as kind of her trademark. And you know, what is that? It's the tongue in cheek sense of humor. It's the wink. It's the subtle little double entendres. It's the clear in your face sexual references. It's the lack of shyness. It's the lack of an apology. It's the honest self-awareness. It's the ability to describe modern situations, tableaus, and experiences for the modern girly um, in ways that are just so identifiable and relatable. The girl outside the strip club getting her tarot cards read. I can make a shit show look a whole lot like forever. You don't have to lie to girls. If they like you, they'll just lie to themselves. You're so dumb and poetic. It's just what I fall for. I like the aesthetic. These are all things that I feel like so many girls. And I mean, like, I just discovered I'm actually only one year older than Sabrina Carpenter. I thought she was much younger than me. Um, I thought she was like 22, 23. No, um, we're essentially the same age. And so maybe that's why I relate so hard. But she speaks like someone who grew up in the same world as the people who are driving music listening right now. And that is, you know, teenagers and up. And she has the same sense of humor humor as we do that I feel like people talk about and it's kind of a tired topic now how people who are like above 40 don't necessarily get the sense of humor of the people below because our sense of humor came from the internet and it's this very like the joke isn't the joke the joke is that the joke is stupid type thing that's the best way I can encapsulate it but like the fun the things we find funny are the things that are said with a sense of irony a wink and like we admire cleverness in humor we admire cleverness and we also admire the opposite like just like straight up stupidity and Sabrina balances those two she balances being really blunt and really upfront and really unapologetic with being really like I loved taste when I first heard it and I have continued to love it I love the like 80s 2000s guitar super danceable drum beat the attitude the hint of steaminess that like for other artists would be like very steamy but like for her and like this album especially is just like a tiny little like a taste um pun not intended it has better than revenge for the new era vibes the like ah. i know it's like i but it sounds like the ah. in the new romantics to me which just contributes to it sounding so very just like 
80s upbeat um, pop to me. I feel like this is gonna be so, so, so fun live. I love the little la 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 um, backup vocals. They're so like silly and fun and each and every time they come in, it just gives such a little like happily skipping along, like knowing she won vibe, especially after the face paintings with his tongue and then it goes la la la. It's so, um, it's so, so funny and so perfect. I absolutely love it. And every other time it comes in the song, it just feels like it's just the humor of it is so cute and funny. Same with the I know I've been known to share and then the laugh afterwards. That is such an iconic moment and she knew it was an iconic moment when she did it. The way it's recorded and like this isn't the only song that's like this on this album um, but like I noticed it first on this one because like I listened to this song first. It has the sense of like I can like hear it being played live like as I'm singing it. Like the best way I can describe some songs that are by the police are like this. Um, this is a very popular band um, in like the 80s and 90s. Some songs by them are like this and if you know you know what I'm talking about it just sounds a little bit like it's being played live like as you're listening to it and you can like hear it's like almost an echo and you're like kind of aware of the presence of a microphone and this isn't the only song that's album that's like this um, but it's the one I'm most excited for. The final thing that I had in my notes about this song when I was like listening to it back and like collecting all my thoughts about it and stuff over the last week or so um, is that this is the song of a girl who may have lost him but she still won and I feel like that can be said about kind of this whole album. Um, but it is more nuanced than that. There is more emotion to it than that. There's the starting up and falling into another relationship. There is the looking back on your own choices. And um, Sabrina actually kind of talked about this in an interview and it makes perfect sense with this album, but like looking back on choices you knew were mistakes, but you made them anyway. And looking back on your feelings about that and just kind of like reflecting and sometimes like without judgment, but just with like observation, like, um, it's just what I fall for. I love the aesthetic and you know what? I may just well do it again. Um, I agree that Please 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 absolutely earned its place in being the second single. I think that it's kind of, it's like disco-y in the way that like is very popular right now. Like I see so clearly like the Barbies and the Kens from the Barbie movie doing like a disco number to this like so incredibly easily. Um, I'm not entirely sure why, but especially just like the way it starts with the instrumental is so disco Scoey in the way that like Barbenheimer Summer um, and like the Dua Lipa of it all very much was but like it takes that and it expands upon it in this way with such a thick sense of humor and like every third line is a joke like this is musical comedy she's doing it and it, there's comedy in the way the lines hit with the music and the timing of it the intonation of the way that she says I heard that you're an actor and the way she says and like the comedic timing of that line it's just so good like this could be in a musical um it advances the plot of the album forward um it is so easter eggy and lovely to like her current relationship even without the music video like i heard that you're an actor i tell them it's just your culture i love doing the clap to it i really can just so clearly see such a fun funny cute dance routine to this and i want someone to take up the challenge and make one that involves the clap um there's also like a decent amount going on musically and i feel like that's one of the many things that makes it so fun to listen to i feel like the easter egging and the berry of it all is what gets the attention and like the humor and like the humor absolutely does deserve attention but i think this song is really fun to listen to and there's kind of a lot going on in it that's balanced pretty well now Good Graces has grown on me. I wasn't necessarily sure how I felt about it at first. At first it sounded like an early 2000s R&B song that I didn't have any like nostalgic attachment to and so I was like not really primed to like it that much and then it sounded like Ariana Grande but truly the thing that made me keep listening to and like like this song the more that I listened was that I realized that the same girl who was present in taste and in please, please, please that I love so much and who I want to be friends with and whose like sense of humor and whose writing I've actually really started to vibe with is present here too. 
she's here in these lyrics and in like the slightly quieter, um, slightly more subdued, but still very like present, very like brash per vibe of comedy. Um, it's here. It's just in a different style of song, but that personality and that humor is there and it's what's made it grow on me that. And we also like, we love a song about having standards um, with just like a little dash of attitude. That's always something that I'm like kind of apt to be here for. Those are definitely like the art race songs that I've like sprung for. And this also isn't like the only moment in the whole album that sounds like Ariana. Like she's killing the vocals on this album. Um, not just here, but in other places too. Um, the doing your chores, um, I'll tell the world you finish your chores prematurely. I don't know. It's just a weird euphemism for me. Like I get it, but it's just like a weird euphemism for me. Me. um but like and she's she's showing with this album that like she is the telling the world type she's not even being like holier than thou either she's just saying like don't be shitty or turn around and be a dick after we break things off because i just don't tolerate that behavior you strike i strike back and i'm better at it period um and you can't like i don't know like rock out and feel like i don't know like kind of pumped up to that to that message i love like a Nicki minaj like i'm the best um like kind of hype up anthem and this has like kind of a sprinkling of that like, sharpest tool has quickly become one of my favorites and i liked it initially but i feel like it's one of sabrina's favorites and one of the internet's favorites too and i think it's going to grow in popularity she paints such a vivid and relatable picture of a relationship and it's breakdown in a way that I really, I don't feel like I've gotten from anyone other than Taylor Swift and Olivia in a couple moments. You're confused and I'm upset, but we never talk about it. It's so painful and real and such a pathetic way for things to fizzle out and things to end, but I feel like it all too often happens. I love the production. It's so subtle and a little, just a little weird, but it supports the journey of the song really well. I love the kind of like soaring sounds. The first we never talk about it going forward. I feel like it just opens up and creates this really big, wide open feeling and it just kind of reflects the emptiness of the like all of this stuff happened and we're certainly not quite on the same page and we're both kind of not the happiest but we never really speak about it we never really have it's never the right place or time when we see each other for a moment or in passing or whatever and so we just never talk about it and there's this weird distance and space and we go on. Um, I don't know I, I really like this song and the more I listen to it the more I think about it the more I enjoy it. It feels like it's kind of a mix of two songs and I like them both separately, but I like the blending of them more together. And again, the way the microphone is processing her voice, I really like it. And it's different than it was on taste. This is a little bit more of a processing, especially towards the end, like the bridge, but I am a fan. I'm calling this as like the internet. Coincidence is another one that I really, really like. Um, I liked right away, but it's just, I'm listening to it more and more. And the more I listen to it, the more I like it. I feel like this is supposed to, the sounds and like the kind of like live vibe of it is supposed to represent like kind of what it would sound like at Coachella, which seems to be inciting incident but not only like the Coachella reference but I just I love the parts of this album that feel like going out and having fun and listening to live music and sort of like letting it all out a little bit and I feel like this was the point in the album at which I realized that was really going to continue I don't know this is where I realized like this album might not like slow down like we're keeping we're keeping chugging um and we really we really really did like this album is very well paced this song is pure sarcasm and this girl having absolutely none of your bs she is seeing right through it and reading your filth with not a single miss or apology in sight and it's about with me i just there's really nothing not to love to be so honest and there's lore like there's just so like there's such good easter egging for the lore deep easter egging like into the production easter egging for the lore also the amount of live instruments used on this album there's such a balance and variety in the production and like this acoustic guitar it's not the only time we see it it comes back again too in demo and poetic but obviously like there it's in a 
very different way. But like we see the acoustic guitar in multiple places. We see the kind of like playing live vibe in multiple places. We see like this sarcasm and like humor in other places too. And the kind of like R&B, like sultry, horny vibe. We see that come up. It's just, there are so many different little ingredients and they're blended and used in different ways. And I think that's really what creates a good album ultimately is just like good ingredients done well, put together clearly and creatively and thoughtfully throughout. To the taste and to the thought and to the tailoring of the artist and what the artist is trying to make and to say and to create for themselves and their brand and their fan and their story and their legacy. And like, she's done that. So like, I did not process this one correctly when I first heard it. It has like clicked in since. I see that it is now a very horny, meet cute song. And I love that. I feel like we don't have enough of those. I feel like we usually have like a horny song or a meet cute song. We don't have one that's both when really a meet cute begets horniness. Um, and this is, being so for real about that. A little personal and a little Easter eggy, and I love that too. Um, and it makes me want to listen to it more. And I feel like she has like caught on to that in the right way. And it has just like picked up traction with her celebrity boyfriend so perfectly. But again, it's the sense of humor that makes it fun to listen to. So many of these songs are so fun to listen to. And even if it's not my typical like sonic palette, like this song is very, this is another like, Ariana Grande moment and I'm like not always like a huge Ari stan. I like some of her songs but like she's definitely not someone that I'm constantly listening to but it's her writing and her sense of playfulness that makes me interested and makes me have a great time listening to this. It is her. She also slays the notes here, duh. And she does it in like a little bit of like an Ariana Grande way, but this is definitely dirtier than... I mean, you can tell me if I'm wrong. I haven't listened to most Ariana Grande albums all the way through, but I feel like this is dirtier than anything Ariana has ever used. Also, if you listen closely, you can hear the little like and the little fade out at the end. Um, it's really cute. She has so many ad-libs. She's so like aware that that makes listeners and fans feel like connected to the artist and connected to the artist's personality. Like, this is what I mean. Like, she's so, like, a student of her generation. She gets it. She knows what we are asking for. And she is serving it on this album over and over and over again. Like, all of the things that we as, like, a group have been kind of, like, into and, like, wanted a little more of, she is serving up the personality the drama the fun the glitter the dancing the sexiness the steaminess the attitude the tea the fuck yous it's just the easter eggs the lore she's really she's checking all of the boxes all of my it was just so goddamn fun and she knows it is fun and silly and just done serious enough to be absolutely perfect i love the little nice um that comes up a few times it's gotten very attached to it it reminds me of the nice from bejeweled it's not the song isn't too deep but it's just clever enough to keep you interested all the way through even though it doesn't have like a whole ton of substance. Um, like you get, you get what it's saying and you're having fun saying it. And like, there are all of these words kind of bouncing around. And like, again, like every third line is kind of like a little pun or a little joke. Like it's cute, it's fun, it's funny. I'm working late cause I'm a singer. Will literally never die. Um, also Honey Bee for Barry um, is like a very cute little Easter egg, but could also just be like not even in the tweet. I feel like there's so little to say about this song because we all know it's great and we know why it's great. Like it's clever and cute and full of like little jokes, but it's like self-aware of itself. Like it's not trying to be too serious. She goes, I'm working late cause I'm a singer. Like you can basically hear her twirling her hair like and like kicking up her little um, platform boot behind her. Like she's building her brand, she is. She's building her brand. And I toast and I, and I raise my espresso to that. This is tea, but. She reads him and herself both in this one. Like if coincidence and sharpest tool are the, you know, it's just funny how like just absolute like explosion. This is the, and another thing that really hits and starts to get to the heart of the issue and something about this person not just their actions towards her. 
um, like really picks at an issue with this person and not just the decisions he's made that affect her. She says it didn't take her long to write this and that makes sense because it's it's very short and it doesn't actually repeat a lot. The only like refrain is this progressive every time she says what he doesn't understand and I think that's so perfect with and I said this in my reaction like the title of the song someone being dumb and poetic and just trying to be more seem more intelligent and insightful and philosophical and grounded than they actually are and trying to feel like they have an understanding of all things for her to say like you know what you actually don't understand is super perfect on multiple levels not only because like they think they understand everything and they want to but they are also always the first person to be like you just don't understand you just don't get it um so for the one refrain to be what you don't understand is just because you talk like one doesn't make you a man just because you act like one doesn't make you a man just because you leave like one doesn't make you a man leaving like a father running like water anybody i love that artists are now just being like yeah men are notorious for leaving does anyone want to argue that point? Please stand. Please speak now or forever hold your peace. And like no one has, no one has come up with issue to that. But yeah, no, it's a very short song and that's really the only one line that repeats itself, but it changes and it progresses each time. But it's really just this perfect little poem. If you look at the lyrics like on a piece of paper, it's so simple and it keeps a hint of her humor, but more than that is so honest and resident and concise. Each line has such a purpose and says such a specific thing and it's such a post-mortem of not only his actions but hers and like not a, not necessarily like putting blame on anyone but like telling him what he doesn't seem to get. One of many things he doesn't seem to get about the situation and like trying to make him aware of the fact that like he does not understand everything because maybe he doesn't understand everything. I love this persona that she takes on like a pouty, vulgar, southern belle. This is a modern dating lament in the style of like a classic Dolly Parton. That, that, that's really all there is to say about it. This is another one that's kind of simple for all that was like going on in the first half in terms of just like loudness and production. But this one is just as effective because it's such a strong flavor of what it is and it does what it's trying to do so well. Like she does just cry to the moon, talk to the Lord about her suffering. The way she says things is so current and so relatable. Like you could say the same things about your dating life if you were swiping through a dating app right now. You know, we love a, we love a moan and bitch and anthem. And I'm sure, I'm sure there are others but I really love this one and I feel like we needed it. This feels like the comedic character interlude song in a musical. The really funny, like singular character song that's just like a little bit separate from the rest of the show, but you're really happy it's there because it's just so powerfully and wonderfully what it is. Um, and like that character might only get to sing like this one song and do a little bit of other things, but it's kind of okay because that one song is that fun. That's what Slim Pickens is to me. Um, and there's so many other great things going on in this album and it's little like interlude song is like fantastic. I'm not opposed to an interlude as long as it's at least a minute and a half long and it really does something. And this isn't even an interlude. This is a full song. Not to mention the like pretty much obligatory at this point, like toe dip into country um, for artists. Like honestly, if you have not done like a foray into country at this point, what are you doing? Um, because country, like I said this in my reaction, like country has come back and it's actually like becoming oversaturated to be like going country now that like Post Malone did his whole thing. And like that album was collab city and to be honest I think that's the main reason he got away with it um not that it wasn't good I'm not gonna talk about that album that's not what this video is about um but that being said she had to have a country song um and she did it and she did it in a way that wasn't annoying because I am a little bit at this point annoyed with everyone having to feel like they have to come out with their cowboy carter um cowboy carter was separate had its own purpose um but you know um it feels like it's just something everyone's hopping on the bandwagon of and this didn't feel like that this felt 
genuine, um, and I, I had a great time. So Juno, I, I feel like this is a lesser sister to taste because it possesses a lot of the same qualities that I like in taste, but I know a lot of people would say that they like this one more because it's just so made to dance to and have fun to and so like 80s pop rocky, but it's also absolutely filthy, which I do not take issue with. I don't take issue with any of it. It's just the knock me up of it all gives me a huge ick that I like psychologically need to deal with. Um, and if I like can get past that, if I really, really try, I have had flashes of moments where I can see past that and it is such a catchy, fun song and I do get why people are bopping to it. Some of the lyrics are not my favorite. Like the first two lines are just not, I don't like them. I don't think they're great writing. The chorus is great and the second verse is great. And so I can excuse it. Um, I really wonder how many people the Juno reference is like completely lost on. I'm very, very, very curious about that. I would love to take a survey. I would love to see the line of like Google searches for Juno, like spiking, <laughs> like just hitting the ceiling um, the day this came out. So it would seem that searches for the phrase Juno actually peaked between August 18th and 24th of this year, as well as in early July. I don't know what happened in these other couple times throughout the past year, but that makes sense. If anyone wants to tell me if that movie is actually worth watching, let me know. I think this song has some of my favorite ad-libs um the like have you tried this one um the little like ah! um i think they're so cute they're gonna be so fun live the guitar solo is truly like not since fearless have we had guitar solos like this from the pop girlies and i'm absolutely living for it and so i'm really working on just kind of microdosing myself on this song until I can get rid of my ick. Um, that is, that's what we're working on. We're working with this song to undo our ick and embrace it because I think it, I think it deserves it. Why do girls, here she reads herself even more than him, I would say. She's reading them both, but I would say she's reading herself even harder. And I really love, love, love the production of this song. At first, I wasn't sure I was going to be super into it. I thought it was going to be kind of ballad -y and I was getting emails I can't send vibes, and I thought I might be a little bored, but then it gets going, and you're so, but it's so engaging. Like, you can't, you can't possibly be bored. The chorus melody is so comforting and soothing to me in some way. And it's such a true core line. You don't have to lie to girls. If they like you, they'll just lie to themselves. It's just so, it hits so hard and rings so true. The way it like picks up, but still, I don't know. It's just such like a calming, soothing song to me. I feel like this and the next song are like holding me and like, supporting me and validating me and telling me it's going to be okay. I love the bridge of the song, the way it's layered and then the acoustic instrument sounds come back in afterwards. I said it before, but this is the, this is what makes us girls for this aesthetic and this generation. And I loved that song. I still love that song. Um, and I love this as kind of like an addition to that show. So the last one, Don't Smile, is really the biggest bummer on the album, but it kind of like collects the sadness that was missing from some of the other songs that were about this breakup and puts them all into here. It's a little bit of a bummer for me, just like in my current state right now, but it's a fantastic breakup song. Like I said, like I feel like it just like Holds you and is very comforting. This, you know, this could be, this is some artist's best song and it's my least favorite one on this album. And I feel like it's probably the weakest one on this album and I still don't even dislike it. And I still do really like cleverness of the line and the writing. Um, it's not necessarily like my style of song, but I do like the layering and the way it kind of has a longer play out at the end. It's another thing that makes it clear that she listens to and appreciates old music. Um, I feel like that's actually really evident 
throughout this album in littler ways. Um, and she's talked about that a little bit in interviews, um, but you can also you can also see it a little bit here. And I'm really looking forward to seeing it more as well. It's weird. We are like, it's, it's like, okay to like old things now. We are like into old things now. Old things are cool now. It's like, we've like worked up to old things being okay and old things being cool. And like, at some point we've crossed a threshold into like the gates opening up and like all old things kind of being okay in some way, if you made them work. She's doing it and I want to see her do it more in in every way because there's like such potential here in like so many different areas okay this was so hard but yeah, you could probably tell from going through the song but after listening to the album through a bunch of times and having chance to pick songs to hear first and such this is my ranking of shows I feel like it's too early. I feel like we let her live in this era. She has a lot of experience to work off of for this album, but she has a lot of threads that she could follow stylistically here. I really like her writing and her sense of humor thus far. I would really like to see that continue. I would love to see her like stay in the poppy genre, which definitely feels like she is a pop girly through and through. That's what she's gonna keep doing. But like, I would love to see another just kind of like mix of different sounds and genres and things that she likes on another album. I love that this isn't totally entirely homogenous, but still is cohesive and fits together and has pieces and parts that are sprinkled throughout and is clearly all made from the same ingredients. I really love it in that way and I really 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 have a good time with it and I'm going to continue having a good time with it so let me know your thoughts let me know what you had a good time with on short and sweet anything that you noticed that I didn't I know I didn't go through the lyrics like line by line like I do with Taylor Swift songs but to be honest it didn't necessarily feel like this is just not necessarily as dense as some Taylor Swift songs don't get me wrong like there are some like cheeky jokes and little easter eggs that could be unpacked but I don't feel like they were very like super deep cuts um so I feel I feel like most people kind of got them but I definitely had fun with this album I definitely do appreciate it and I'm definitely going to keep listening to it we will be getting back to Taylor very soon do not worry thank you guys so so very much for watching if you did enjoy this video feel free to let me know in the comments and by liking it liking it let me lets me know that you liked it and it makes me so 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 very happy also thank you for watching to the end that helps a lot too i appreciate you so so very much um i see every single little like and comment and view and it makes my heart sing so thank you thank you thank you i really do mean that and i cannot wait to see you here again in the next one Mwah.